Hey everyone. So yeah, in this video that no one asked for, I'm going to be recommending a system for black against the English opening. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this is because I think a lot of people don't have like a solid system against pawn to c4. Um, and so I was looking at a lot of options like e5, um, you know, the reverse Sicilian, um, knight f6, followed by e6. So what about that move order? What about the English defense with b6, which doesn't equalize at all? It isn't even close. Um, and then eventually I stumbled out on the just the classical approach of playing e6 followed by d5, trying to uh, allow white or, you know, uh, trigger white into entering or transposing into the Queen's Gambit declined. So I think that if you are a Queen's Gambit declined player from black, then this uh, video will uh, benefit you if you are like kind of confused on what to play against the English. So yeah, I want to start off with by showing this game that this FN played against me. Um, I mean that I played against this FM uh, many months ago. And the game started with knight f3. After pawn to d5, they played pawn to c4. And uh, okay, this is more of like the ready opening, uh, which allows pawn to d4. But yeah, uh, we could basically like a reverse Bononi position, but um, with white having, you know, the first move. And so they can generate a lot of counterplay with this kind of approach, um, which is why I decided to play pawn to e6, which is more solid. And here, white can, of course, transpose to the Queen's Gambit decline with d5, uh, but now g3. So this is the main idea. Uh, white wants to play on this long diagonal and say that the pawn on c4 just puts pressure on d5. So that now uh, white wants to, you know, increase the pressure here, uh, play bishop g2, um, castle, pawn to d3 maybe, or just b3, bishop b2, and just say that, um, you know, if you take on c4, then you're going to lose some control over the center. Um, meanwhile, if you don't, then you're going to have some annoying pressure on this long diagonal. But... Black will exactly do that in this in this recommendation that I will make. D takes c4 is actually um, the best move. So uh, instead, in this game, I played knight f6, which doesn't change much, much. But actually, I will be recommending the pure D takes c4 move order. We will also be looking at a lot of sidelines with like pawn to e3. Uh, I think uh, without knight f3 included, let's say c4, e6, b3. We will also be looking at that. We'll be looking at e3 here, uh, knight f3, d5, and e3 also. And so we're going to be looking at a lot of things. It said, okay, let's just go through this game, e6, g3, and now knight f6, bishop g2, and d takes e4. So let's talk about this move first. Um, black gives up uh, like some control over the center because it no longer controls the e4 square, but they at least get rid of the headache uh, in this entire setup that what is arguing, which is that they have a lot of pressure on the center and this long diagonal. And oftentimes, if we're able to solve the problem with this bishop, which um, like to get on this long diagonal, then black is going to have a very comfortable game. Uh, after the main move is to play the move queen e4 check and after knight bd7 which is very important um, after queen takes e4 black will play the move a6 followed by c b5 so then they can play the move uh, bishop b7 quickly and i want to compare this actually to the uh to two openings um the semi-slav um, which can happen after let's say d4 c6 c4 knight f6 um let's say knight c3 e6 e3, knight bd7, and bishop d3 in the Maran. And we can see that the main problem behind this setup again, and in many variations of the queen's gambit declined, is this um, bishop on c8 just being very bad. And so the main idea that black has is to take on c4 and then play b5. So then they can solve the problem with this bishop with bishop b7, uh, and then later breaking with c5. Let's say bishop d3. Uh, I'll just go into like a very, um, very cooperative uh, position if if white plays this way let's just say castles a6 let's just say they play rookie one then immediately after c5 black is already very comfortable and we see that if we go into if we compare this version where black plays the move c6 and then c5 compare this with this with this line that uh, where we immediately play a6 and b5 here where we will simply get the bishop on b7 without having to play c6 and the c5 we're simply saving a tempo right um actually i will talk about later that how queen c2 is maybe a more accurate move order just to get out of b5 with tempo uh, but castles here is played after b5 i think that a lot of people will simply castle here and not know that queen c2 is the best move but either way queen c2 bishop b7 and now rook d1 and i simply play pawn to c5 and here my opponent played a very bad move here which is already pawn to d4 and the thing is that it, it looks like it makes sense you know you're challenging the pawn to c5 you're putting a pawn in the center but the thing is that the queen on c2 is very vulnerable. So after my next move, rook c8, I think my opponent was definitely feeling the pressure here already. 
Um, Bishop g5 here is probably best, but I will simply take on d4 with a pawn up. So instead they took on, c, uh, on c5, I play bishop takes c5, and now they play queen d3, since already bishop takes f2 is a threat. And now I play the move bishop e4, harassing the queen, queen to d2, and already here I have a tactic. If I want to win the game on the spot, I could have played the move bishop takes f2. With the point after king f2, I play bishop b1, and there's already the threat of knight e4. So white is going to have to move the queen away, but now we, I retreat with the bishop, and I'm simply a pawn up. So, you know, like already from well, from like 15 moves, I'm already much better. I could be much better against this fm. But instead, I play the move bishop c2, which is quite fancy as well, um, which I eventually managed to get an advantage um, and win this game. But um, yeah, basically from the opening perspective, we could see that uh, one small wrong like one small, one small misstep from white could already lead to a big disaster and so i hope um that game serves as an introductory to um to this entire system that i will be recommending and so let's look at it from the main move order pawn to c4 pawn to e6 okay actually we can talk about the move orders a bit after knight f6 here the main problem that i've found is that after white plays knight c3 if we play if we're if you we don't want to play g6 here uh, and enter some kind of Grunfeld or King's Indian, and if we play the move e6, then what has this knowing move pawn to e4, which enters the Mechanis Carl's variation? It's very, very sharp. And black has to play the move pawn to d5 here. Uh, I think basically pawn to c5 has been refuted. This has been played in the past, but it's not very good. Uh, d5 here, though. And the critical test is what happens after pawn to e5, pawn d4, ef6, dc3, bc3, and now queen f6. And white has both, like the moves knight f3, followed by bishop d3, or the immediate pawn to d4. And after pawn to e5, black is equalizing, but this is very sharp and something that I personally don't want to play, so I wouldn't be comfortable recommending this for you. So um, instead uh, of this move order with knight f6, I will be recommending the move pawn to e6. And let's look at a couple of sidelines. Pawn to g3 here will most likely transpose to the main lines after d5. Uh, bishop d2 and d takes c4 um, but there are some sidelines like what happens let's have a queen f4 check regaining the pawn knight d7 queen takes c4 and pawn to a6 preparing b5 what happens if white does not play the move knight f3 and the reasoning that white might have is that they don't want to um, they don't want to allow pawn to b5 so comfortably where um, you know that will simply expose the black rook um, and so if let's say black play, white plays knight f3 Okay, of course, b5 just transposes. However, let's say pawn to d4 is played. Uh, we'll just simply continue with knight gf6, developing queen c2, just simple prophylaxis, but now pawn to c5. And black will play b5 eventually, let's say after knight f3. Uh, b5 is very much possible here. And black will play bishop b7 if white does nothing. If knight e5 is played, then we have this very typical response, knight d5. And this is the only reason that this entire line works. Um, yeah, and let's say after knight d7, bishop takes d7, dc5 is possible, but we will simply, simply play a rook c8 here. And this is, um, you know, this is very nice for black. Um, oops, queen c3 is definitely not a move. Um, yeah, I and mean, we will simply take on c5 with the bishop and just get a nice game. Um, so instead, instead of d4, maybe d3 makes a bit more sense, um, but now we'll simply continue with knight gf6. Let's say prophylaxis, queen c2, and now again c5. Um, and knight c3. So it's important to notice that with the move knight c3, they're actually controlling the d5 square. However, if we play b5 and later white wants to play a4, then we can kick the knight away with pawn to b4. So the knight of c3 has like its upsides and downsides here. Um, but instead, we'll just simply play bishop b7 after knight f3, and now we castle. So the main point is that if we play, well, let's say castles, castles, we don't, we can't play b5 right now because this will right, run right into knight e5 with both the threat on the rook. Um, and also maybe a knight c6 here. And just simply the rook is just trapped. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, after knight e5, the typical response we want to play is like knight d 5 But with the knight on c3, that's not possible because it's being attacked twice. So instead, we play the move rook a7. And simply after b5, black gets a nice position. And um, let's just say we can put a couple moves on the board, like rook d1, b5, um, a4, we can play like queen b6 or, yeah, I mean b7 i think b4 also makes a lot of sense here knight b1 bishop b7 and get just get a fine position here um, and the thing is that we can like there are a lot of moves that white can play but black is never running out of any plans for example they can always play the move bishop b7 
they can always play h6, you know, useful move, getting some loof. They can always play rook e8, bringing the rook back to c8 to coordinate their pieces. And so black is never really running out of any useful moves. And as long as you have a, you know, good understanding of the position, uh, this is very much okay. Knight c3 is interesting. Um, the thing is that after, if we play knight f6, of course, it allows pawn to e4. So d5 here. And white should definitely transpose into the queen's gambit decline with, by playing the move d4. Um, but instead, if they play the move g3, then this runs into a problem because this knight on c3 simply gets kicked. And after d4, um, both knight, f, knight e4 um, and knight b1 run into um, this move e5. Let's say knight a4, also e5. And you can check this PGN um, in the or this leech study in the link below. And I don't really want to spend too much time discussing this, but essentially black is much better. They'll simply play a move like c5, knight c6, and if white ever plays d3, then remember, it's important to always play the move pawn to h6 so that we can prepare knight f6 without running into the bishop, uh, running into bishop g5. Because if we know the basic uh, concepts of the Benoni, it's that this bishop is a bad bishop. And so if white is able to trade her off with like bishop g, after knight f6, bishop g5, then this kind of you know, makes it a bit easier for, for white to move. And so we just simply want to, you know, play c5, knight c6, h6 if necessary, knight f6, bishop d6, and just castle and get a nice space advantage there. So that's the idea. Instead, if white plays the move b3, this approach is basically um, inaccurate already because um, simply white is uh, neglecting uh, the control over the center. So we can immediately strike with d5. And the thing is that black gets a really comfortable game after both e3, after which principle is just to play knight f6, but this will transpose into, um, into a line later that I will discuss. Um, but instead, pawn to d4 is very nice here. And this already gives black a nice initiative, actually, because black's already threatening pawn to e5, uh, getting a nice control over the center. Um, and if white plays e takes d4, then now we will play the move knight c6. We don't want to take on d4 immediately because white simply plays knight c3, followed by knight f3 with the tempo. So instead, we play knight c6 so that we can recapture with the knight after bishop e2. Let's just say knight takes d4, knight f3. Uh, we can also play c5 in this position, but bishop c5 has been tried in the past, and I think this is uh, a very nice move also. Uh, if white plays the move g3, then black is much better after pawn to e5 because, first off, white cannot take on e5 because of queen e7, and they're already running into problems with bishop g4. So um, this is already very nice for black. Instead, if they play b4, which is trying to dislodge this bishop from the defense of this knight, now knight takes f3 makes some sense, but this move queen f6 is also very nice, and it's a big surprise if white hasn't seen this before. Um, we're threatening to first off double the pawns, and also win the bishop on b2 with a discovered check. So knight takes f3 is best, bishop d4 takes takes, and black gets a very comfortable position here because they prevent pawn to d4, and they've traded a lot of pieces here. So black has a, uh, white has a lot of weaknesses on the dark squares here. Uh, the queen or d4 is also, uh, also can't be kicked away easily. Uh, so here, white can play the move knight e3, and this was tried in the game Gregorians against Shirov in 2008. And here, seeing that the knight wants to go to c2 and maybe push pawn to d4, black plays the nice move. Black can play the move knight e7. Instead of the move knight f6, which looks very tempting, instead knight e7 aims to go to f5 with the point that, okay, first off, you cannot play knight c2 immediately because queen e4, and white is forced to play knight e3, which, you know, moves the same piece a lot of times in the opening. Not very good. They can't block with the bishop because g2 falls, and they can't block with the queen because the knight falls. So white should probably, probably play bishop e2 first, and after which we'll play castles, knight c2, and queen f6. So the queen still stays on, on this diagonal keeping control over the d4 square and keeping the d8 square open for the rook after pawn to d4 um we're following this game um this pawn to d4 simply becomes a target after rook d8 and knight f5 queen d3 was played preparing rook d1 but now knight f5 hitting the pawn rook d1 and black has a very nice tactic knight d4 knight takes d4 and pawn to e5 and simply black wins the piece and is going to stay a pawn up after queen f3 was played a decent try uh, saying that if you now take on f3, the knight will re retreat and white will be up a piece. So ed4, queen f6, gf6, and black gets a bad pawn structure, but the extra pawn really matters. For example, uh, king d2 is played after bishop e6, bishop d3 trying to blockade the pawn. Black played the move b6 in this game um, and simply will continue with c5 um, and just maintain the extra pawn. 
c5 takes takes rook b1 and now after rook a b8 um it doesn't it simply prepares to trade off the rooks and doesn't allow white to activate freely um after rook b3 black will do just do the same rook b6 rook f rook h to b1 rook d to b8 and if you want you can look at uh this yeah this study again in the in the link below and you will simply find that um white does not have enough compensation for this uh for the lost pawn um so yeah i don't want to spend too much time on this not so critical variation but this is a nice demonstration of what could happen um if white places move b3 um instead let's look at the move knight f3 um and after this pawn to d5 what can play this move e3 and this is quite an annoying setup honestly like at first but the thing is that if you know some concrete lines i think that you're able to equalize um this is actually surprisingly an aggressive setup the point is that if uh, after knight f6 uh, white will play the move b3 okay if you play the move knight c3 uh, this will soon transpose after let's say bishop e7 uh, in general if if the approach if the option is either to like go for uh quick complications or get the king castled and then go for complications i will choose the latter i will choose to you know um solidify the position first get bishop e7 castles in before ever uh challenging white in the center um but yeah this will soon, soon transpose after knight c3 bishop e7 b3 uh okay pawn to d4 will simply transpose into like um a queen's gamut declined here uh but with the bishop on um with the bishop stuck on c1 which is not ideal though of course it's still equal uh instead after bishop e7 b3 is the idea trying to put the bishop on this diagonal after castles this will soon transpose so let's just look at this variation with b3 bishop e7 bishop, bishop b2 castles and now uh the best move here is to play the move knight c3 though of course bishop e2 has been played in the past though i think the in I, I want to recommend this setup with the move pawn to b6 the idea is that you simply get the bishop on b7 and you get a comfortable game and against both bishop e2 and knight c3 i will be recommending the move b6 uh let's look first look at bishop e2 after b6 the main idea is for white to take on d5 generally and say that if you take on d5 now with the pawn the bishop on b7 really is lacking some squares though this is exactly what i will be recommending against the move um knight c3 later on um instead of bishop e2 but the problem here is that without the move knight c3 included white can black can play the move knight takes d5 and after castles bishop b7 if you play the move knight c3 i can simply take on c3 and we will get an uh get a simplified position with a fine game but what if white does not play the move knight c3 they can play a3 here this is most popular uh but now here pawn to c5 and if white plays a passive move like d3 here we'll basically get a hedgehog setup which is very funny like a reverse hedgehog and after black plays knight c6 black is already slightly better here they'll play move like bishop f6 trading off the strong bishop and get a nice game uh instead pawn to d4 is also possible but now we'll take on d4 uh since we don't want to uh, allow d takes c5 and you know forcing our bishop to move again after knight d4 knight c6 takes takes bishop f3 and rook c8 black will again play bishop f6 and just trade off the the strong bishop on this diagonal uh and get a fine game and let's see against queen c2 trying to maybe just you know get a useful uh, move in knight c6 is logical knight c3 and now rook c8 and again like you you don't really need to know too much theory here which is what i like about this position um but you just need to know like some general themes of this e3 variation in the english um instead knight c3 and the thing is that black is faced with a dilemma a positional dilemma to say um, it's possible here to play the move pawn to c5 but the point is that white wants to take on d5 and if you take on d5 here this is slightly inferior because white plays the move pawn to d4 and leaves black with an isolated pawn on d5 here uh let's say c takes d5 knight takes d5 then black is left with an isolated pawn and white gets a slightly preferable position which uh yeah i, I don't want to recommend so it said knight takes d5 is better but after queen c2 um i feel like black doesn't like um black com like objectively equalizes but it really isn't my cup of tea let's say after b6 knight d5 e takes d5 and again d4 because if you play queen takes d5 then at least white gets in bishop d3 and gets some pressure on this diagonal uh and also threatens bishop e4 so this is quite annoying instead e takes d5 is best but again d4 
And after pawn to d4, it's like, let's say knight c6. Um, at some point, black will be either left with the uh, hanging pawn structure after d takes c5, or black will eventually have to take on d4 and leave themselves with the isolated pawn on d5. So I really don't want to uh, get a position where there is you know, a simple plan for white to play. Um, and it's possible to take d takes c4 here, though this is quite unexplored. And I recommend if you want to surprise your opponent, then this move is quite viable. Um, instead, I will be recommending the second most popular move, the, the move b6. I like it because it doesn't accept a structural weakness, and it does threaten bishop b7 immediately, so that c takes d5 can be met with knight takes d5, which is why white has to take on d5 in this position right now. After e takes d5 and pawn to d4, white is arguing that the bishop on b7 is actually going to be quite passive. But a thing that a lot of people uh, forget is that actually this bishop on b2 is also passive. So yeah, this is like completely equal. It's just that white has the extra move, so they're going to maybe uh, try to create some initiative. After bishop b7 just developing, controlling e4, and uh, bishop d3, knight bd7, castles, a very important move to play here is the move e6. The reason is that we want to play bishop d6, but we don't want to run into knight b5 because we don't want to give up our bishop. And so here, white can play the immediate knight e5, but after bishop d6, f4, trying to reinforce the knight, the Pillsbury knight on e4, uh, on e5, Black can do the same with knight e4 and either play the move uh, knight d to f6 to reinforce the knight or play the move f6, which is an interesting idea. But we need to be careful with f6 because it maybe can run into some knight takes, e, knight takes e5, d5, and bishop c4 check. And then the knight fork on f7 is quite uh, quite a bit annoying. So yeah, knight df 6 is a very reasonable idea next. Uh, so instead, rook c1 is possible, but again, we just play bishop d6. Uh, and if white doesn't occupy the e5 square quickly, then we will play the move queen e7, let's say knight g3. Uh, knight f4 is also possible, but we will play knight e4, sticking the knight in the center, bishop b1, trying to free up the some squares, but now c6. And this is the setup that I want to recommend, basically. It looks a bit strange because, um, you know, you're putting this, uh, the pawn, um, to uh, you know, blocking our own bishop, but the point is that these pawns become quite flexible because it doesn't mean that the pawn can't eventually move forward. It just means that we're removing a weakness on the c7 square so that if white plays queen c2 uh, and knight e5, uh, oftentimes we can't take on e5 here because the c7 pawn falls. But in this position, we're just simply getting rid of that weakness. Um, and so, yeah, with the structure, it's quite solid. Instead, knight g3 is possible, uh, trying to prepare knight f5, but of course we play g6 here. Uh, and after queen c2, let's say, now we can play the move rook f to c8. Uh, it's, it's also possible to play the move pawn to c6, but after rook f e1, if the, the fact is that pawn to c6 doesn't control the center, while well, white is basically aiming for a central advance, which is why pawn to c6 runs into problems after rook f e8 and pawn to e4. Uh, this is equal, but I, don't, I just don't want to allow this, uh, which is why rook f c8 makes more sense. So that after rook f e1, now we can stick the knight on e4 without running into problems with the c7 pawn. So this is equal already. Um, yeah, basically if white doesn't play a quick knight e5, then this is not problematic for black, which is why the main, uh, the most challenging move, I believe, is the move knight e2. And I think if you're playing from the white side of this, this is a very interesting idea that you could try. It either tries to bring the knight to g3 um, to generate some kingside play with like knight f5 maybe, uh, or push e4, or else has ideas of knight f4. But I think knight g3 is more, um, more challenging here. Um, they can play rook c1, but it will simply play queen e7, knight f4, let's say knight e4. And of course, like once we blockade the e4 square, we're going to be completely fine, like in this position, for example. And we can look eventually in the future to play, play a5, maybe b5. Uh, I think maybe a5 is generally more useful, uh, rook f8, and we'll eventually uh, play maybe a move like a4. And it's very reasonable for black. Um, instead, knight g3 is most common. But now we're g6, and this is the point. We want to prevent knight f5 uh, whenever there's a threat, and we just want to play rook f8 next. Um, knight e5 is the most popular move, and some high-level games have been seen there. But let's look at queen c2 here. White can try to fight for the e4 break, but and black should prevent that with queen e7, rook ac1. And now since they're going to try to put pressure on the c7 pawn, now we play rook fc8. Now the reason is that you want to overprotect the c7 pawn, because if you play a move like rook ac8, then now queen e2, and the rook is kind of forced to move back. So this is kind of like a draw offer, which 
I don't really want to, you know, recommend it. So uh, the thing also is that if we play pawn to c6, again, it runs into problems after e4. So with that being said, rook f to c8 is the most, um, is the cleanest equalizer here. Um, just overprotecting the c pawn. After rook f e1, now we stick a knight on e4, and we're ready to, first of all, we're blocking, in, blocking the e3 pawn. We're ready to play a5 followed by c6 to solidify the queen side, uh, so that later, after we play the move pawn to c6, the c7 pawn is no longer in danger, and we can bring the rook from c8 back to e8, and we can put some e file pressure. And later, black can also think about think about expanding on the queen side with you know pawn to b5, and it doesn't leave a hole on c5, but black is controlling that square like a lot. So, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, instead, the most challenging move is just after knight e2 is the move knight g3, and of course after g6, uh, knight e5. So this is the point. Um, knight e5, I think, is most challenging. Of course, queen c2, we can play queen e7, but knight e5 here. And the thing is that if we play a move like queen e7, then this runs into problems after f4, I, f I believe. And this is possible and playable, but after, let's say, knight e4, this is the typical response to white playing f4. Because notice that once white has played f4, the typical response is always to, uh, to respond to knight e4, because uh, the pawn can no longer go back to f3 to kick away our knight. So this is the typical response. After bishop e4 and d4, though, both knights e4 are possible, it is possible, but also this move knight takes d7. And concretely, this is okay for, for black, but this is very scary. Let's say d5 here, uh, trying to get some play on this diagonal, and also um, attacking e4, uh, this the c4 pawn. So pawn to f5 is forced, but now after queen d4, the king, uh, the, the computer says that queen, king f7 is the only move to draw and to, to equalize. But obviously, like, with the king f7, it's like, black black is just simply the one on the back pedal here and their minor pieces are kind of miserable in this position so i don't really want to recommend queen e7 instead i want to recommend the move knight e4 and if white plays the move queen c2 trying to keep the tension we can now take on g3 and create these double pawns play queen e7 threatening knight takes e5 so um now f4 is also not possible i believe because of the move f6 i believe this is the move yeah, f6. And the point is, after takes takes, at least this this pawn on e3 becomes a big liability for, for white. And also some some weaknesses on the squares here and the double pawns. So, instead, rook ac1 is best. Trying to put some pressure here. But now, rook ac8. Uh, just defending the c pawn. Queen e2. Uh, attacks the a6 pawn. So now, we liquidate actually into this endgame. After bishop a6, takes takes. And now, we want to play like rook, c rook a8 maybe to win the a pawn. But we don't want to run into like maybe some problems with queen b7. Uh, so instead, I recommend this move queen d6, which is very solid. And black is preparing to c5 next, so that only then they can play rook a8 uh, without you know allowing the queen to infiltrate and create some weaknesses. Uh, and so this position with you know white having some structural disadvantages as well is just simply equal. Uh, but also quite nice for black. I like I like black's position. Um, which is why after I think bishop b4 d4. Um, Knight c4 is possible. Yeah, but simply bishop e7. Um, I think, yeah, after uh, bishop e4, queen c7. Yeah, okay. Knight f6, yeah. Okay, so we'll actually look at some um, forcing lines here. Um, after knight e4, uh, I think, I actually forgot which position we looked at, but after takes takes, yeah, we get into this position. Um, and so instead of queen c2, bishop takes e4 is actually the most challenging. Uh, the point is that after d4, the pawn on e4 can, can be a target here. Um, what can play also the move knight c4, trying to win the bishop, uh, and so playing a move like f5 is actually very bad, because after takes takes, white plays d5, and again, opens up the, the queen's diagonal. And this is, first off, a structural weakness, and secondly, this bishop is just too much of a monster there. So, instead, bishop e7 is best, just trying to maintain the bishop pair without allowing knight takes d6. And now d5. This is the point. White opens up the, di the diagonal, hits e4, and maybe it introduces some d6 ideas. So now f5 is the only move. And what happens if white plays a move d6? Trying to get to knight, the knight to d6. Here, we don't want to take on d6 and allow the knight there. So we play the move bishop f6. Uh, and as soon as black is able to fight for control over the uh, dark square diagonal, uh, there are no more threats and black should be okay. Instead, knight e2 is uh, strongest, just trying to keep, uh, trying to maybe infiltrate to f4. Um, so after bishop f6, again, the general rule is that if we're able to challenge the long diagonal, then black is going to be fine. Knight f4, bishop b2, queen, knight takes b2, queen f6, 
hitting the knight to tempo, knight c4, and now rook f7. A very, very important move. Imp uh, first off, x-raying uh, the c7 pawn, um, and it does allow the move pawn to, c to pawn to d6, but now we can play the move, the counterintuitive move, pawn to c6. So the point is that um, even though we are shutting out our bishop, we are controlling this d5 square a lot. Uh, we can prepare rook d8 next, and later this d6 pawn may be even a liability. After b4, we can play rook d8, which has both the ideas of uh, knight e5 followed by b5 to pick up this d6 pawn, and also g5 followed by f4 to create a big initiative. So yeah, black has a lot of play in this position. Um, and so that's not a problem at all. It's just that after pawn to d5, it's just, you know, don't be afraid of the complications. Um, instead, after here, instead of knight c4, queen c2 I think is most challenging. And now we have to play the move knight f6. Because playing a move pawn to f5, again, maybe runs into some problems after it takes stakes. Maybe pawn to d5 here. Um, and yeah, I believe this is possible. Um, or also, I think queen c4 actually is just much better here for white even. King f7, takes stakes, and d5. I wouldn't like to play this position as black. Um, but yeah, essentially knight f6 is best here. Um, and white has many moves here. Uh, they're not like worse than each other, but... Essentially, if white doesn't do anything against this e4 pawn or, you know, create some deadly threats, then black is simply going to play like queen e7, maybe rook f e8, putting some pressure on the center, maybe play move like a5, gaining some space, and maybe even strike the center with c5. Um, and, you know, that's only if the situation is right. And I think that you need to do your own thinking if you reach such a position. But in general, black is not worse here. So the most challenging move that I've found is this move on to d5. And the reason is that I saw this game uh, played in the Grand Swiss in 2023, um, where up to this point, the position is completely equal. But uh, Sanal Vahab, Vahab Sanal actually um, played the black side of this against Matthias Bluebaum, and he played the blunder, bishop takes d5, which after queen c3, surprisingly simply wins for, wins for white, because um, there's already like some threats of like knight g4, knight g, yeah, knight g4 possible, even knight d7 here, for example h5, knight d7, and after you take, queen f6, mate is unstoppable. So that's a very nice trick, but uh, if black plays the correct move, knight takes d5, then white can't hope for an advantage here. After knight takes e4, we now take the take the strong knight on e5, bishop e5, and knight b4. This is the point. We're unleashing an attack on e4, so that now the c7 pawn is untouchable, queen c4, and now we remove more pieces off the board, bishop takes e4. Uh, let's say if they play queen takes b4, we can play bishop g2. This is a nice tactic, seeing that queen g5, uh, queen d5 is a, is a, is a threat here. So that wins a pawn. Instead, rook f d1 is best, but now queen g5 creating some threats. Queen f4, which forces the exchange of queens. After which we'll hit the rook, rook d7, and a pawn to c6. And it seems like black is up a pawn for now, but uh, white can surely get equality here after we challenge the rook, play b5, play c5. Uh, I mean, like if you don't play c5, then uh, you're you know, this pawn structure is also quite weak. So c5, rook c7, rook c8. Uh, let's just follow this line. We can trade a bunch of pieces. But at the end of the day, uh, all black can hope for is a draw objectively. Um, though, you know, up to this point, like, you know, like at, at least black is up, the one up, the, up a pawn in this position. So not a bad result. Uh, instead, if they take on e4, then after queen e7, simply pinning the bishop, uh, black, white is already, um, or sorry, rather, black is already threatening rook f e8. Um, black can e either play like a d8 uh, and maybe stick an out on d3 if allowed and overall just has a has an equal game here so in in conclusion this move with this line with e3 is not challenging i mean it is challenging um practically speaking but objectively this is completely uh fine as long as you know the theory um so yeah that's essentially that essentially covers this e3 line okay and now we will go into the Big variation after d5, g3. And so here, uh, the move that I will be recommending is dc4, though I don't think after knight f6 it changes much because knight f6 is a universal move that we want to play anyways. So anyways, d takes c4. And here, let's say white plays the move knight c3, then I don't think this makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, black can play knight c6 or even a6 here, bishop g2 and b5. And this would be... Completely fine position, um, otherwise, you know, after knight c3, simply knight f6 makes a lot of sense, and you don't mind giving away the back the pawn after queen a4 check. So, yeah, there are a lot of approaches which is which are fine, but 
Um, yeah, after, let's say, in this position, why can't we immediately play queen e4 check or sacrifice the pawn for more long-term compensation following bishop g2? So first, let's look at the uh, the move, actually, bishop g2. Um, just sacrificing the pawn. And after the, pos the position after a6 here, saying that now if you play queen a4, I'll play b5 with the tempo. So you can't really do that. And if white tries to play the move a4, then this really weakens to b4 square. And so you do you are trying to win the pawn back, but yeah, this is definitely not the way to do it. Um, so here playing knight c6 makes a lot of sense. And if you play knight a3, here a very nice move is to play the move e5. So the main idea generally of knight c6 is so that once white plays the move a4, you can play the move like a move like knight e5 here. But I found that this move e5 is actually surprisingly strong. But the point that, that after knight c4, uh, you can play e4 here, kicking the knight away. And the knight doesn't have any good squares besides maybe knight g1. You can play knight e5, but the knight is quite misplaced here. Takes takes and queen d4 I think is quite nice. Um, yeah, and it's white will have to maybe play move like f4 and really weaken their position. So knight g1 here, but now bishop c5. And this is nice because there's the threat of bishop takes f2. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a threat of bishop takes f2 if bishop takes e4. Uh, otherwise, knight f6 will be played and black will get a very good posi position. Um, in this position, of course, knight f6 is also playable, but bishop c5 is quite tricky. After bishop e4, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, and queen d4 check, uh, it's clear that white will, uh, the black will win the bishop here because that's an important piece off the board. Uh, knight e3, queen e4, knight f3, knight f6, pawn to d3, uh, and dropping just simply the queen back to e7, queen b3, and castles. And simply black will play a move like bishop e6, rook e8, and just get a very nice position here um, with the king being a bit exposed here, uh, some pawn weaknesses on the board. So yeah, it's clear that only black can be better here. Um, and instead of knight e3, it's also possible to castle immediately. But after again e5 followed by bishop e6, black will be actually be able to hold on to the pawn for after knight e3. And now even the idea of e5 is again e4. After knight e1, this move queen d5 is quite annoying. After, let's say, d3, cd3, uh, ed3 would result, uh, wouldn't lead to much, actually, because still the queen is in a pin, so, like, after either knight f6, this would be completely fine for for black. So, instead, after knight takes d3, just trying to develop a knight f6, it's clear that black is better here already, since um, they're up a pawn and white pieces are a bit uh, uncoordinated here. Um, so, yeah, that's this move a4, which isn't very challenging. Instead, white should probably play castles in this position. And here, it doesn't make much sense to play a move like knight c6 and try to play b5. And so I just don't recommend you to hold on to this pawn. Again, we just want to play a move like knight f6. And let's say after queen c2, um, again, I don't really want to hold on this, to this pawn. I think a move like bishop d6 makes a lot of sense. Even though the bishop normally goes to, d, uh, goes to e7. Um, in this specific variation, it's important to know that you can actually develop the bishop out to d6 here because... Um, the bishop doesn't face any problems, um, you know, getting harassed by, um, you know, any uh, moves like knight, knight, knight d2 to c4, things like that. So, yeah, this is quite nice, quite a nice placement for the bishop. Um, what well, can play a4 here, but again, this is very typical, you know, it's like just very weakening of like, especially the dark squares in the position. So castles, queen c4 and c5, and black just gets a nice game with knight c6 next. Um, say pawn to d4, c d4, um, queen takes d4, knight c6. Queen h4 and now bishop e7, and we've essentially neutralized um, this Catalan bishop because uh, the knight is on c6 now. It's a very nice placement for the for the knight, and we will also be able to support some e5 advances if allowed. Let's say knight c3, pawn to e5, preparing to bishop to bring the bishop out to e6 or f5, and after let's say rook d1. Now because white has played a move like a4, um, this allows like the, the queen to simply be on a very good square on a5. Uh, bishop g5 can be played but this allows h6 because there's no really there's not really good you know good place for this bishop especially because this queen is vulnerable to being attacked after a move like you know knight g4 or something like that so bishop g5 makes some sense but after h6 we'll simply win the bishop pair and after let's say queen h queen h5 white is hoping um that um yeah that they have like some pressure on this uh, on this pawn and maybe some weaknesses on d5 or e4 to take advantage of but after bishop e6 preventing knight d5 or rook d5 black is simply slightly better um yeah with the two bishops um you know open lines they can trade off the rooks and this bishop which is normally a problem is not a problem at all in this position so yeah instead of a4 queen takes c4 makes some sense but again 
uh, because okay like a4 the idea is to prevent b5 with tempo but queen takes c4 um the problem again is that it runs to b5 so here if white plays a move like queen b3 trying to say that i want to put pressure once your bishop lands on b7 with the move a4 it's important that we can play the move knight bd7 here and of course like if you play b the move b4 i don't really like this decision because uh, especially when the knight is not on c3 um this just really weakens the c4 square and allows white to play a quick like d3 knight bd2 knight to c4 which i don't really want to allow so knight bd7 it is and it's of course critical to take on b5 but now the point is that we play the move bishop d5 hitting the queen and the queen doesn't have a great square to go to to defend um the um yeah the this pawn for example if you play move like i don't know queen queen d3 maybe i'm already thinking about bishop e4 uh, let's say queen b3 and a b5 and maybe if you trade off the rooks uh, you can't even take on b5 because the knight is hanging uh you know this is just a bit of freestyle off the top of my head but seems to be very decent for um yeah seems to be very decent for black um instead queen c2 is probably better uh and this has been played twice and actually because some quite high level games by some super grandmasters um, and after a b5 takes queen takes a8 just lining up on this diagonal white can play both either moves and these have been played knight a3 is possible but the game but the game continue with queen b7 d3 pawn to c5 and clearly like black is controlling a lot of space they have some nice bishops on the board uh the king is not in any danger and black is obviously completely fine here so yeah you can check the game uh, out if you want in your own time but knight c3 is also possible and of course they're hitting both pawn, both like the bishop and the pawn so bishop c6 uh pawn to d3 castles bishop g5 and you know the problem is that typically this bishop doesn't have a great square if it goes on e3 then maybe knight g4 hits so bishop g5 but now it runs into h6 so it takes takes uh rook c1 makes sense and now rook c8 i believe that this is a fine continuation for black um yeah it doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be any problems here uh maybe a move like queen b7 makes sense um trying to push b4 and then later dropping the bishop back to push c5 so that's yeah something that looks very reasonable for black uh, or even just b4 followed by bishop b7 so that the bishop stays on this long diagonal yeah that makes a bit more sense to me i think and black is doing completely fine there so so yeah it's possible to sacrifice in yeah just in conclusion this line with bishop g2 it's possible to sacrifice a pawn for a bit of more long-term compensation but what black if they don't try to hold on to it shouldn't face any problems really and there are a lot of ideas connected by playing this move a6 followed by knight knight f6 um and then bringing the knight later on to c6 as we will see like um not in this position sorry but um i think knight f6 queen c2 bishop d6 uh queen c4 b5 and yeah queen c2 uh i think queen b3 yeah we actually looked at this one and the point is that um yeah we get the bishop this bishop on the long diagonal and we get a very typical and nice play here um and yeah actually i don't think I, we've looked at queen c2 here but yeah um the point is that there's not a lot of theory here to know it's just after bishop b7 white has a couple of moves like knight c3 makes a bit of sense but simply castles like e4 is possible but we've just played b4 this undermines the pawn so this is okay for black um and yeah otherwise knight c3 doesn't make a load of sense because a4 can always be met with b4 now so yeah like just some things to know about the position pawn to d4 also just gives black a target on d4 so i'm thinking already moves like knight bd7 followed by c5 if allowed so let's say rook d1 um black can already play c5 if dc5 bishop c5 would be quite nice um but knight c3 queen e7 followed by rook c8 maybe uh quite a good position actually so yeah uh, let's just look at a couple of other moves you know just to show some possible lines of play like bishop g5 but again typically we just we can we can play h6 here or even the very strong move rook c8 trying to prepare c5 um, i think it's important actually to play rook c8 so that we can play c5 next immediately and the point is that if we play um yeah we want to play rook c8 so that after a4 we can always um be ready with a move like c5 later on so that our queen can actually go to b6 and defend our pawn on, on b5 since uh, again like typically we don't want to push this pawn forward unless the knight is on c3 right and so here if we play a move like c5 um after a b5 and a b5 why can play knight c3 and uh attack this pawn on, on b5 here so let's say queen b6 takes takes and queen b3 with with some pressure here so 
This is a bit annoying, which is why White should probably castle first. Uh, Black should castle, takes, takes. Knight c3, and now b4 hits. Uh, if knight b5 comes, the point is that even though we're going to give up this bishop, um, after h6, White is also forced to give up their bishop pair, essentially. Um, I mean, they could drop back, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, bishop g4 maybe runs into already, like, knight, knight g4. Uh, bishop b3 runs into knight g4. And overall, this bishop, this bishop just doesn't have a good good square to work with. So, takes, takes. After takes, takes. Uh, c takes d6 is important so that the queen can later go to b6. And our bishop is just, again, like, very nice on this diagonal. Black has no issues at all here. Okay. So, let's just go back all the way to this position after d takes e4, where white can play the move queen e4 check. And I think this is going to be the most popular move in the position. Um, just simply trying to win the pawn back immediately. So here, the main move is bishop g2, just trying to, you know, delay queen takes e4 for one more move. Because after queen c4, uh, a6, um, white can also play the move queen c2. So this is uh, a deviation that is possible, uh, saying that now b5, um, even though it can be played after, let's say, bishop g2, yeah, we will get, we'll actually transpose into um, into this variation uh, later on with the main or move order of like bishop g2 first. Um, but yeah, another possible way to play is, of course, b6 followed by bishop e7. And we just get this position, which is completely fine. Um, but of course, if it's, it's just a different way to play. But um, the main point is that with this pawn on b6 instead of b5, it's not going to get hit with a4. But of course, as a result, you kind of surrendered more space. But of course, this is like a perfectly reasonable way to play if you want to avoid the confrontation on the queen side. So yeah, that's the main idea. Uh, let's look at bishop g2 and a6 here. So the point is that after, uh, okay, I mean, we want to play just simply b5 next. So um, what should probably do something about that? Knight c3 makes sense to, so that if we play b5, they can play knight takes b5. But now we continue with the knight f6, castles, and now bishop e7. It's important to play bishop e7 instead of bishop d6 because it might run into some knight b5, you know, making use of this pin. So either way, um, yeah, queen takes c4 is best, but now b5, queen b3, and now bishop b7. Uh, again, like a4 runs to b4, so that's not nice. Instead, d3 makes a bit more sense, but after castles, um, this one game, I believe, played uh, saw this move queen c2. But simply, this is like a very passive move after, you know, white has played queen e4, takes c4, to b3, and the c2. Clearly, something has gone wrong, and white can play the move c5. Let's say after a4, typical response we want to play, if allowed, is always play the move queen b6. Otherwise, second best is the move a4, a b4, right? Queen b6, bishop g5, again, it's hard to find a place to develop this bishop. h6, bishop e3, and now I think rook a8 is a, is a fine way to play. Uh, I think this is an improvement over the game, but knight g4 is also a reasonable way. Uh, just kicking the the um, kicking the bishop away. Um, though of course I think rook a8 is just an improvement, so I will promote that. And instead of queen c2, of course, like the immediate a4 makes a bit more sense. But after b4, since we're not we don't have the resource of playing like queen b6 here, also the b5 pawn is under too much pressure, so b4 makes sense. Knight b1, and now we don't want to really allow a5. Although it is possible to allow the pawn to go to e5, I think that playing e5 immediately doesn't have any downsides. And we simply want to play c5 next and just gonna, you know, gain some nice control over the queen side. The main point is that if white plays a5, it does create the possibility of this pawn on a6 being weak for black. Um, same thing goes for white actually with the pawn on a5 is that it, it can be a weakness, but I didn't see exactly like a great way to take advantage of it. So I don't want to recommend that. Instead, a5 makes a lot of sense just gaining space. Knight bd2, and now c5. And this is, again, like, not a lot of theory, but very typical, very nice, uh, solid position with a good strategic basis. So, yeah, that's the smooth knight c3 and all the complications um, that could happen after it. Um, instead, queen takes c4 makes a bit more sense. Uh, but now b5, and now queen c2. Uh, and simply we'll play bishop b7 before white is given the opportunity to play move like knight e5 or knight d4, right? And so after castles, knight gf6, white has a lot of moves here, but in general, the idea of knight c3 doesn't, uh, doesn't really make much sense because it's very committal, where if white ever plays a4, again, we have the very convenient response of b4. So it doesn't, yeah, for c5 and like a4, we can even play a move like queen b6, and 
it just looks very similar to what could happen in the normal normal lines. Uh, b3 is possible, but this gives up some control over the center to c5, and so I don't really like the, the development of the bishop on b2, even though it conceptually makes some sense because if the bishop ever goes to g5, then it can always get hit with h6. On bishop f4, it can always get hit with knight d5. So bishop b2 makes sense, but I found that after d3 castles, let's say knight bd2, rook c8, black just gets a bit more space, and uh, the bishop on b2 is kind of... Uh, this entire con construction isn't really helpful for the black pieces. Instead, typically a4 trying to challenge white's uh, black's queenside space makes more sense rather than going for this setup with b3, bishop b2. If they play a4 immediately, then we can take advantage of the fact that this uh, b4 square is weak and we can play the move knight d5. There are also ideas of like playing a move like bishop f6, trying to trade the bishops off because this bishop is quite a nice piece. Uh, knight bd2, knight b4 is quite annoying. This is played a couple of times actually um, by yeah some very strong players uh, queen c1 makes sense knight f6 um, queen b1 just trying to um, yeah it doesn't it doesn't actually like it doesn't look very intuitive but maybe the intention is try to clear up the c1 square for the rook just try to develop the pieces because otherwise yeah this construction isn't exactly very attractive um, we're always happy to exchange off these last squared bishops right uh, if the knight ever moves. So black is a bit, uh, you know, uh, has a bit of a space advantage, essentially. Uh, queen b1, h6, just a useful move, rook c1 and queen b6. And this was reached actually in Boris Koko versus Alexei Andr Alexandrov in 1997. And the game continued bishop e5, knight g4, bishop c3, and knight d5. And I just think that in general, um, after bishop e2 and like rook a c8, Black has a very nice position because they can continue to improve their pieces. For example, they can bring the knight from g4 to f6 back. Uh, if, if it's kicked away, maybe they can always play rook fd8. They can bring the knight again to b4 if, if they want to. And overall, black is the one dictating the play. So black is already slightly better after the move b3, I believe. Though, of course, care needs to be provided there. Instead, pawn to d4 is exactly what we saw in um, the introductory game. Um, and this just gets hit with c5. And the problem is that um, at any moment, we can either play a move like rook c8 or c takes d4 to exchange off the bishops, which would be very favorable for, for black. Um, so instead, yeah, rook d1 fails to rook c8. And as we saw in the, in the introductory game, this doesn't really work out for, um, for white. So instead, a4 is, um, sorry, d4, c5, a4 here is a possible way. But after cd4, uh, if you take on b5 here, a b5, rook a8, you want to take on a8 with the queen so that now knight takes d4 is not possible since the bishop, G bishop on g2 is hanging. So knight a3 has been played a couple of times, but now after bishop a3, b8, 3 castles. Why well, can try to strike at these two pawns with uh, queen b2, but now pawn to e5. And even though we're giving up this uh, b5 pawn after queen takes b5, we have the move rook b8, and we have some nice discoveries. Our pieces are getting very active, and this pawn on a3 is also very weak. And notably, of course, like this is a very, very nice center. So yeah, uh, it doesn't really work out if white tries to play the move d4 here. Instead, a4 makes more sense, just trying to challenge this, this queen side. But now after c5, if you take on d5, this is clearly fine. Queen e8, knight e3. And now we don't really want to play b4 since maybe knight c4, you know, gives, uh, gives a square for the knight. Though it's, yeah, it should be still equal. But queen e6 like just doesn't give any, any room for white to... Um, to get some, you know, activity for the pieces. Let's say D, uh, queen b3 is possible, like d3, bishop b7 is fine, queen b3, and now bishop c6. Again, still controlling a lot of space, uh, keeping this bishop on the nest diagonal. Black should be slightly better here. Um, instead, pawn to d3 here is possible, which makes a bit more sense. Bishop e7, just finishing development. Knight c3, okay, putting a lot of pressure on, on this b5 pawn. So, you know, the best move always to reply to to this quick attack on the b5 pawn is this move queen b6. Second best again is pawn to b4. But queen b6 here, um, and white can play queen b3, but after b4, you know, like a5 here, uh, queen c7, this pawn on a5 may, be pro may prove to be a weakness more than a strength. Let's say after, you know, if you reroute the knight, um, I'm already thinking about like maybe after knight b1. Yeah, bishop d5 makes a lot of sense here, otherwise castling also. But bishop d5 after queen c2, yeah, e5 even makes some sense to me, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I'll turn on the engine for one second. And... 
Okay, maybe not e5, but um, queen c2 and the engine recommends rook d8. Yeah, seems to be very solid, but of course, like precision, precision, precision needs to be had. Uh, I already was looking at the move e5, but a very non-standard um, idea. Uh, what should be better after this? Um, so instead, a b5 makes some sense, but trading off the pieces really just gets closer to a draw. White's idea might be maybe to play queen b3 to try to provoke this pawn to advance. Uh, so b4, and there are of course like a lot of knight moves that can be played. Uh, knight e4 just doesn't make any sense. Like um, any queen move is okay, but queen e7 just keeps an eye on this on this knight, keeps pressure on the a file, and the knight is just offside here. There's already the big threat of like bishop c6. Um, instead, knight d1 is possible, but the knight can go to e3, but it doesn't really do a lot on e3 besides you know go to c4. So I don't see after castles, I don't see a reason why white wouldn't just play the move knight b1 so that it can go to d2 and go to c4 without like obstructing any of their pieces like their bishop so after castles knight bd2 and now seeing that knight c4 is possibly like gonna come with temple i like the move played in this game in 2010 with the move queen a6 saying that basically black can always improve the position uh, with moves like h6 you know bringing the bishop to c6 uh freeing up the a file with for the work to go to and just domination on down the a file here um, and after knight c4 was played, h6 is a nice move, just, you know, preventing bishop e5. e4 is possible. The thing is that, like, otherwise, if white doesn't play a move like e4, then this pressure is a bit annoying because white doesn't really want to exchange the bishops off. So e4 gives some, you know, um, some s flexibility for this knight to move around, so maybe to go to e5 or something like that, but it does block in this bishop. So bishop c6, freeing up a8 for the rook, bishop queen c2, rook a8 b3 and now knight b6 trying to trade off this these knights and so knight takes c4 would be a very good transformation of the pawn structure let's let's say after bc4 uh, we get a pass pawn on yeah on b4 here and if dc4 then they lose the e4 pawn so white needs to be careful and they need to defend this knight by playing a move like knight f5 also hitting the bishop and now black can play bishop b5 putting some pressure bishop b2 and now seeing that these this knight is kind of strong Playing a move like knight fc7 makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, let's say rook c1 is the best move, but now we can trade some pieces and play a move like rook d8, covering the d6 square. And overall, you know, this is still an equal position, objectively, but uh, there are some targets to play against. So this isn't like a complete, you know, dead draw without any plans, uh, you know, without any counterplay for the black pieces. Black can still try to play a move like, um, you know, queen b7, try to maybe reread the bishop to c6 later on. But of course, they need to be wary of some ideas of like Nettie, Nettie 5. But overall, yeah, like there is a weakness to play against and Black shouldn't complain if they manage to get this position against a strong player because they've neutralized all of White's pressure in the opening, essentially. Um, so yeah, that essentially covers this entire line with uh, E6, D5. Uh, you know, this entire, entire repertoire against the English, I believe. If you have any questions or like... Um, yeah, suggestions or any lines that I missed in this video uh, in the English, then please do comment those down below. I do think that this is like a very solid way to play. And if you're a Queen's Gambit decline player uh, and you just like to exit the opening without any, um, you know, without white causing you any problems and you're okay with playing equal positions, this is, I think, a great way to play. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, see you next time. Bye.